okay? So we've been hearing a lot about stand your ground, right? Emotions tend to run high when you mention that phrase, stand your ground. So I wanted to do some investigating. That hasn't stopped a Georgia coalition from keeping it in the conversation. They're aiming to get the statute deemed unconstitutional, unconstitutional, arguing the law discriminates against minorities. One of the cases highlighted in the Georgia lawsuit is the 2012 death of Chris Johnson. There he is. He was shot to death after a confrontation in a bar in Noonan, Georgia. Johnson was black. The shooter was white. A Coetta County jury acquitted Adam Lee Edmondson, who used Georgia Stand Your Ground law as his defense. I traveled to Noonan just this week looking for answers in a case that has people demanding Georgia make a change. Pay close attention to the two men highlighted in this video. In less than one minute, one will be dead. This video will become the star witness. Do you miss him? Yeah. Along with this man, the victim's best friend, who was there and called 911. I need an ambulance to corner town in the building right now. My friend just got shot to kill. You think it was murder? Yes. I think it was. Witnesses say the shooter, Adam Edmondson, and the victim, Chris Johnson, had argued the night before at the same bar after Edmondson flirted with Johnson's girlfriend. The next night, when Edmondson realized Johnson was in the bar, prosecutors say he went to his truck, got a gun, and carried it illegally back into the bar. Later in the evening, Edmondson allegedly approached Johnson's girlfriend again for the second time in two nights. The bar's security camera video shows Johnson approaching Edmondson and hitting him. Then people pull them apart. Johnson on the left, Edmondson on the right. And they appear to be separated. Then prosecutors say Edmondson fired a fatal shot, hitting Johnson in the chest. Before he shot him, right. he held it there. So it wasn't a... It wasn't just a pull up, bang, it pulled it up, put it right on his chest, and held it there for like maybe two or three seconds. Enough for Chris to like, like you know, what's going on, and... Time. Pulled the trigger, so. Edmondson's attorney, Brian Lewis, says his client was justified. There was evidence from the trial that he saw the gun, knew that Adam had a gun, and yet he kept coming toward him. And Chris Johnson, who was a, a bigger guy than him, was coming toward him. Uh, and I think the jury believed that Adam felt, and a reasonable belief was, that he had no other option than to defend himself. But prosecutors say it was excessive force, and the law is being misinterpreted. So if I slap you, you can't shoot me. Right, right, exactly. I can slap you back, you know, uh, I can in kind, whatever I'm reasonably in fear of, I can defend myself of it. I can't, when you use excessive self-defense, you become the aggressor. The case has caught the attention of National Civil Rights Organization, the Rainbow Push Coalition, to challenge Georgia's Stand Your Ground law, saying the law is biased against African Americans. In this case, the victim is black. The shooter is white. The jury, all white, too. Do you think race was a factor? I think so. Why? Well, you had a, a white man killing a black man who had already assaulted the white man um, in a bar. And, uh, you know, I, I have to think that they don't just ignore that point. Do you think race played into this? Honestly, I do. Why? Just of... It's just a matter of personal opinion. Um, with the jury being all white and wearing a South and my buddy being black. In the end, even with a videotape, an unarmed victim and eyewitnesses, Adam Edmondson, the shooter, was exonerated, found not guilty of first-degree murder. Stand your ground, stood. We're examining this case and others around the country. I'm going to be joined right after this break by CNN legal analyst Mark O'Mara and criminal defense attorney Mark Nijain, as well as weather throughout the country. Severe weather. We'll be right back after this break. Uh, you saw the story in Noonan, Georgia, just before the break on Stand Your Ground. And I want to bring in now the top two Florida attorneys, CNN's legal analyst Mark O'Mara and criminal defense attorney and legal analyst Mark Nijain. They join me now from Orlando. Thank you guys uh, so much for joining us. How you doing? Very well. Good to see you. Hi, Don. Yeah, Always good, good to see you. See you. Talk to good you. to see you. Uh, we may, if we have some breaking news, I may have to get to it. So, but and I want to reiterate that Adam Lee Edmondson stood trial. He was found not guilty in the shooting death of Chris Johnson. So. 
Mr. O'Mara, I can't say Mark because both of you might answer. Mr. O'Mara, do you feel there, there was enough evidence in this case to prove stand your ground? Do you think the jury came to the right verdict? Well, you know, we have to sort of defer to the jury's verdict when they've had a chance to look at the case and apply the law. Certainly, when you look at that videotape, you wonder whether or not Edmondson had an opportunity to do something else besides shoot. And I've even talked about some modifications to what we call our stand your ground in a way to try and make that your decision of last resort, not first resort. So mm -hmm. it seems like the jury listened to the statute that was in place um, and came to the right verdict. We have to trust them. But I've always thought that stand your ground can be polished a little bit. Okay, that's interesting that you say that because when I talk to the, the prosecutors and even the defense attorneys there, they're saying, hey, listen, no law is perfect and there's no chance that, that any of this legislation that's happening around the country to try to overturn stand your ground is going to be effective and is going to happen. But you think, and, I, and it's interesting because you defend it, right, George Zimmerman, you think that stand your ground, not that you use it in that case, but stand your ground can be tweaked and and, and I guess more importantly, do you think that it's discriminatory against people of color? First, to the first question, um, I think it can be tweaked in this way. Unfortunately, because of the George Zimmerman case, 100 million people have now heard about Stand Your Ground, and I think they've gotten the misimpression or misinterpretation of it. I believe that it should be modified to say, though you can stand your ground if you can move away if you can retreat without increasing the danger to yourself or to others then you should try and take that opportunity again it's a very thin slice um, but i think if we at least say that that is the change in the law then people will realize that though you still can protect yourself in a dangerous situation that you should try and remove yourself if you can without increasing danger to yourself okay um, Mr. Nijame, the, uh, the shooter here, Mr. Edmondson, had martial arts training according to the court documents and to um, the attorneys there. He also went back to his truck, went out to his truck to get a gun, brought it back into the bar illegally, and still, it's still a stand your ground case where he got off. Can you help our viewers to understand that? Well, look, stand your ground is tied in tied up in so many ambiguities that there really is no way to make strict sense and apply the law to every situation because we're going to see aberrations time and time again. What everybody needs to remember is the legislatures have voted this in in the majority of states now because it's been a big NRA lobbying effort. So now we've taken, which I think nobody really doubts uh, or, or challenges, and that is a, the castle doctrine, where you have a right to protect your home. If there's an intruder in there, you don't have to retreat. You can go ahead and, and take care of your family, take care of your belongings, take care of yourself without retreating. Well, what Stand Your Ground does, basically, it takes this castle doctrine and it takes what you're allowed to do in your home to a public place. And when you have that in, in tremendous amount of leeway, then you're going to have these aberrations, you're going to have lots of misjustices carried out, injustices carried out. With that said, I see very little chance of most legislatures changing the law. I think that the NRA has too many politicians who are falling in lockstep with, with uh, their agenda. And it doesn't look like it. We've had the same issue in Florida. And, and there's been all sorts of arguments. And have we seen any changes? No. Do we proje uh, project any? No. You answered my next question is that there was no chance of, of, uh, of whether or not there was a chance of this case or any other case. Uh, to both of you gentlemen, uh, uh, thank you very much. But I want to ask you but just before I go, Mark O'Mara, do you think that there's any chance of any of these laws being overturned or changed around the country, even though you think they should be? I think they're missing the battleground. If they're trying to overturn stand your ground or self-defense, it's not going to happen in any of the states, and it's not going to be found to be an unconstitutional law, because quite honestly, it's not. But if the true battleground is the way the system is treating certain demographics, then let's take on that battle. If we attach it to stand your ground, it's a losing battle unless your only intent is to keep the troops rallied. Mark, I didn't ask you, was justice carried out here? Don, I think I, did you talk to me, Don? It was justice yes, carried sir. out. Oh, uh, look, it depends upon whose side you're rooting for in a case like that. But, you know, in every case, there's always going to be typically a winner and a loser. And we're going to see when we have laws that are um, knee-jerk reaction laws and they're not thought out and they don't really properly cover matters, then you're going to see injustices taking place on a daily basis throughout America when this law is applied and people don't have the courage in the legislature to do the right thing to make a law that makes sense and is understandable by judges, by lawyers, and especially by juries. Yeah, great conversation. I'm going to have you guys back. We'll talk much more about this. We appreciate both of you. I wanted to talk a little bit more, but we have breaking news here on CNN. Mark Nijame and Mark O'Mara.